One of the most provocative findings to come out of the Gartner Research Shop prior to my departure was the vast majority of customers, B2B buyers of complex purchases, who claim they didn't want to engage with a sales rep at all as part of the purchase, whether it be early or mid-stage or late, that they had a strong preference for what we called a, a rep-free experience. Now, the, that particular data point uh, sparked a great deal of debate, uh, concern, uh, questions, keynotes, of which I delivered several. Um, and one of the reactions was from sales perspective, well, customers have no choice. They have to engage with us. Our, comp our, our, our solution is so complex or so customized that Customers really have no choice but to to engage with our sales reps, to which I would always respond, yeah, but what if they could? This isn't a vote of what they were doing, but what they prefer to be doing. So the fact that there's a broad gap between what they'd like to do and what they have to do is actually really a cause for concern. But I think the the other question that came up, particularly from the marketing side, was like, hey, this is marketing's time to shine. You know, let's uh, if customers want to engage us in digital, we need to think more about our digital experience. And I think that conclusion is particularly uh urgently necessary, given the fact that those customers who prefer a rep-free experience wind up with higher levels of purchase regret. So they may it's one of those, be careful what you wish for, because you just might get it. So that I, I go into a digital experience. I try to avoid reps completely, or at least as much as I can, for whatever reason. We'll leave that for another uh, breakdown video, perhaps. Um, but the result is I actually struggle to buy on my own because the digital experience, let's face it, for most B2B purchases is frankly awful. You know, it's kind of funny, actually, when you because uh, we all kind of know this, right? When you <laughs> ask any CMO about their website, the first thing they'll do is kind of stare at their feet and reply sort of mutteringly, yeah, you know, we're working on that. Um, because we know that most of our B2B websites, frankly, aren't really designed to create the kind of customer experience that's going to give more uh, give customers more confidence in their own ability to make these bigger decisions on behalf of their company. And if you kind of sort of root cause with sort of what's going on, I think it's largely because most of our digital experiences, that is largely our our website, are designed to do really one thing. I think most B2B websites are designed to do what I would call broadcasting. They're, they're, they're designed to broadcast to the world three things, who we are, what we do, and how we help. So we we all have a broad, you know a website that sort of describes who we are as a company. There's a, a statement usually in three or four words of what we do. Usually it's got the word solution in it, you know, sort of progressive or forward thinking. There's, you know, if you're a med device, there's someone in a lab coat holding a test tube up to the light. If you're in global logistics, there's a, a semi truck coming at you with the sun behind it, you know, whatever it might be. This is who we are and what we believe in. Oh, by the way, we're green, right? What we do is the list of all of our solutions and our capabilities broken out by either vertical or or um, or capability set, solution set, whatever it might be. So who we are, what we do, and how we help. And so here's the specific ways we can help your company. But notice, you know, while those things are valuable to know, they're all about one thing, the supplier. They're nearly not about the customer and what the customer is trying to do. So here's a different way to think about websites. What if, what if our B2B website wasn't so much a static place to describe to the world who we are, what we do, and how we help, but rather it was a place of learning for your customers is a place that they could come and experience not so much your solution, but they could experience the journey of learning what they're trying to do and which problem they should they should prioritize and what are the best ways to get after that particular problem. How are they going to measure progress against it? So I've talked in the past about sort of objectives, tactics, metrics, targets, timelines. Imagine a website that was designed to take your customers on a journey of identifying objectives, prioritizing tactics, aligning metrics, selecting targets, and determining timelines. That that would and to do that not just alone as an individual, but to do that with their colleagues and to do that not just with their colleagues but in the context of other companies who've gone on a similar journey so it's it's kind of imagine a a, a value experience or inside your websites where i could come to your website and maybe it's the front page maybe it's a place that i get to just don't put it under the resource tab please i beg you uh, but maybe it's a place on your website where I can ask questions like, okay, here are my three top three priorities. What do other companies like me think about these priorities? How have they solved them? What are the what are the ways they've prioritized those particular objectives? How are they tied to each other? Okay, so if those are my objectives, if I pick one, what are the best tactics for getting after that objective? Well, what are the kinds of tactics other companies like mine have pursued? What are the tactics maybe I never thought of? Can, can the website prompt me to think about tactics that I haven't thought of, but it's simultaneously, can that website bound my thinking such that I don't get overwhelmed with 50 different tactics 
all solving the same problem. Help me prioritize, help me identify. This is a website that is essentially playing a frame making role. It is putting a framework around my problem. So identify my objectives and my tactics. What are the right metrics? How would I even select them, right? So let's say these are the right metrics. And so you've given me on your website different web uh, metrics to choose from based again on other companies' experiences, based on maybe it's AI and what it determines to be the best, um, uh, the best way to measure progress against that particular challenge or opportunity, whatever it is, give me some guidance. So I think, okay, oh, that's a metric I didn't even thought of. That's a great idea. So for a company my size, given my timeline, what would be an appropriate target for that metric? And then ultimately, what's the right timeline? So that when it's all done, I essentially I've built out my five dimensions of objectives, uh, tactics, targets, uh, metrics, targets, timelines. And then I've got essentially out of that a, a simple calculator, if you will, or a calculation that, that, that lays it all out and says, here's what you're trying to do. Here's how you're going to get there. Here's how you're going to measure it. Here's when you know you've achieved it. And here's how long it should probably take. And I could put all that together in one place. And I've assembled that with my colleagues, either, either in real time or uh, asynchronously. And I can share it with them. And of course, it's all happening on your website. So you can see it happening. That to me would be a pretty incredible website. I don't know of any website right now, at least, that looks like that. There's some that have sort of ROI calculators on it, but this is a this is a much more this is much something more robust than a calculator. It's it's an experience. It is a place where you can go, almost like a like a town hall for you and your buying group to go into a, a virtual conference room and map all this out, get input from others, both real time and asynchronously, um, and put together a strategy. Imagine your website as a place for your customers to build their strategy all based on value. That's a pretty cool idea. And I think the first couple of companies that get there are the ones that are really going to stand out in the eyes of their customer. 